Wes Anderson is a director with a very distinctive style. His sensibilities are very dry and deadpan. It's seen in his writing, where frequently characters will say outrageous things in a way to imply that somehow just makes sense. Read her back to me so far, Pietro. Dear Eli, I'm in the middle of the ocean. I haven't left my room in four days. I've never been more lonely in my life, and I think I'm in love with Marco. New paragraph. On the way to the camera work, using mostly still and very flat shots. Every one of his films has this style. His breakout hit, The Brilliant Royal Ten Bombs, exemplified this style. None of his movies before or since have fully captured the magic of Ten and Bombs. Not to say that any are bad, but nothing has been as good. Perhaps the closest he caught was with the Grand Budapest Hotel. I knew there was something fishy. We never got the cause of death. She's been murdered. And you think I did it. Hey! And the worst, with the like of Aquatic with Steve Zuzu. Isle of Dogs allies itself closer with Aquatic than with Budapest. The story is about Japan overrun by dogs who carry a dog flu. To fight this, all the dogs have been relocated to an island landfill called Trash Island. We follow a core group of five dogs, Brian Cranston, Edward Norton, Bob Balaban, Bill Murray, and Jeff Goldblum. This group stumbles upon a young boy, Koyo Rankin, who crash landed on the island looking for his dog. They take it upon themselves to help this boy in his quest. There's a lot to appreciate here. By saying the film in Japan and translating the barks to English, as is explained in the opening, it allows us to relate more to the dogs than to the human characters who largely communicate with the audience through subtitles or a translator. There are some cool themes such as manipulation of the powerless by the powerful, though it does go pretty far into bizarre conspiracy theory territory. The problem lies largely with Wes Anderson's style. It doesn't feel like anything new. His style hasn't changed much in his two decades of filmmaking. Many of the tricks he employs here can be seen in Rushmore. His style is bland by design, relying heavily on story and visuals to stand out and engage the audience. He's very good at making it work, but after a while his old tricks feel tired and his lack of new tricks discouraging. Isle of Dogs might be a fun movie if you're not overly familiar with Anderson. It has its moments of genuine humor and a nice theme about loyalty belonging only to those who deserve it. However, if you follow Anderson's work, you'll likely find this film just a bit too dry with just too little new to make this watch worth your time. Hey, if you like this video, please make sure to hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe. That helps me out a lot. And if you really love this video, consider visiting my Patreon page. 